What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homegirl gossip girl here. And today I want to talk to you about some serious stuff that's going on. It's so much going on at one time that I can't even cover it all. I have to take breaks in between because it's getting that heavy out there with all these children getting hurt and, and, and it is too much. But today I want to talk to you because a 13 year old, well, between the age of 13 and 18, they said, um, some, a guy named Jared Wright was living underneath this teenager's bed for three weeks. Okay. For three weeks, he was living under her bed. Okay. They did catch him and he is charged, but let's get into this story real quick. An Ohio man is accused of raping a teenager girl and taking new photos of her while living under her bed for weeks. His name is Jared Wright, 20 years old, has been charged with three counts of rape and one count of producing child pornography, the jail records show. According to the Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office, Wright had met the alleged victim, who is between the ages of 13 and 18, on Instagram. You got to be careful out there, young people. You have to be careful because people who you talk to on Instagram nine times out of ten are not who they um, portray to be so you have to be careful he lived under the under her bed in her cincinnati home for three weeks during which he allegedly sexually assaulted her says the prosecutors okay now Wright allegedly held the team down and forced her to have sex according to the prosecutors she knew he was living under her bed but her mother did not Wright was arrested after the girl's mother discovered him. It's unclear whether the girl invited Wright to stay at her home. And it's also unclear whether he ever left the home while allegedly living there. It was not immediately clear if he had entered a plea and attorney information for him was not available on Wednesday. You have to be careful, young people. Now they saying that they don't it's not unclear if she invited him into the home. Well, how would he how did he get there? You know? Um, did she sneak him in through the window and stuff like that? Did she let him in through the back door? Like, I need to know what else is going on with this story. So I'm probably gonna be looking around for more information. But I just want to get this out there to you guys that talk to your kids, man. Talk to your young children, talk to your teenagers. They do not need to be answering DMs from people who they don't know, okay? And if they're unsure about something, have them be have them be comfortable enough to come talk to you and say, look, ma, or look, dad, look, this guy is in my DMs. What do I do? And then you reach out, okay? Because these predators out here, they don't care. They, they come in, they, they come in many disguises, okay? Many disguises. So you have to be careful out there, young people. You have to be careful. Now, another story I want to talk to you about is this, about this young boy who's eight years old. And the police had an encounter with him three weeks before he died. So let's get into that, okay? Houston, Texas. A Houston police officer spoke with an eight-year-old boy three weeks before he was found unresponsive with both new and old injuries, including patches of missing skin and deep ligature marks. The boy's mother, Kayla Holzendorf, who's 24 years old, and her common-law husband, Dominique Lewis, who's 28, have been charged with injury to a child and tampering with evidence. Those charges could be upgraded. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. Najee Jackson told ABC 13 she called police on February 28th to report abuse. The boy who had been identified in court records as Keontae Holzendorf was selling muffins outside of a food town on Briar Forest. She said he was unkept but also injured. He had a cut here. Jackson um, said, motioning to her eye, old cuts and bruises. When I asked a little boy if he was okay, all he did was stare at me. He did not speak. And sometimes that's a sign. Okay. Jackson provided video of the encounter to ABC 13. Three and a half weeks later, the boy was found dead. Jesus. I felt like I could have did more. But what more could I have done, said Jackson? Listen. You did what you were supposed to do. 
you was concerned, you asked a little boy, he couldn't answer you at the time. You know, you sh- you can't hold that. That is not for you to hold. I can understand how you feel, but it's not for you to hold because you did report it to somebody. You called the police. You had video footage and you sent it in. So you you did your part here. According to HPD spokesman John Cannon, the officer wrote in his report that the boy seemed playful and not fearful of his parents. The parents told police he got the cuts and bruises from falling off a bike. Following procedure, the officer contacted CPS who ran a check and found no records. <sighs> CPS. And you know, and that's another video that I want to come back and do probably the end of this week. I want to talk about CPS because I feel like there's more children out there that's dying at the hands of their parents than there are kids surviving. Okay, sometimes CPS go, go after the wrong families you got people who will call cps on somebody who's taking care of their children their house is not dirty their house is clean they're doing the best they can and they will remove those kids but the kids they don't remove and need to remove are the ones that always we read about in the newspaper and i'm tired of that cps has to do a better job at protecting these children okay do you know how many cases out there that's like gabriel gabriel fernandez that little boy went through hell he went through so much and i felt like cps failed him just like cps failed another kid that the same situation as gabriel was in it happened okay nitz mary brown uh, from brooklyn i will never forget that story cps have to do better Okay, they have to do better because this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And it breaks my heart because if you don't want to be a parent, don't have children. Don't have children so you can beat on them and abuse them and then later on take their life. Don't do that. The same treatment that this couple, okay, did to him, it needs to be done to them in prison. I just I just don't like crimes against children. I really don't. It pisses me off. So CPS, who ran a check and found no records, Cannon said the officer also contacted the state CPS in the physical abuse unit as a precaution. CPS has had prior contact with the family, confirmed the spokesperson, but details are confidential according to the law, who wrote Melissa Lansford in an email. Hmm. Huh. Tuesday night, police and firefighters responded to a possible drowning call at the Quality Inn and Suites off a broad, off a West Beltway around 11 p.m. Investigators said it was obvious there was more to the there was more to it. I can't completely say we were sold that it was a drowning when HFD and Houston police arrived. This complaint had many, many signs of chronic abuse. But old and new injuries, and the new injuries are horrendous, explained Gilbert Swartel, Swartel, excuse me, the chief prosecutor of Child Fatality Division at the Harris County District Attorney's Office. Oh, that's a mouthful. It involves large patches of skin missing from his chest, upper arms, thighs, and genitalia. He also had fairly new deep ligature marks on his ankles. Handcuffs and duct tape were found in the room, says Sortel. He added the mother admitted to hiding the handcuffs, which led to tampering charges. We believe those handcuffs may be associated with ligature marks on the ankles. Oh my God. Officers found the boy on the floor in the middle of the room on the second floor of the hotel. Paramedics began CPR and transported the boy to Texas Children's Hospital in Katy, where he was pronounced dead. Holzendorf and Lewis were in the room when officers arrived and were questioned, police said. We believe this to be domestic violence related and we are investigating this now with our homicide division. Assistant Chief Wendy Bainbridge 
but the Houston Police Department said at the scene, we suspect foul play. Oh yes, it is foul play. An autopsy will determine whether the charges against the couple should be upgraded, said Sawtell. He added the boy did not go to school and had very little contact with other people beyond selling baked goods to strangers. They will use their son to go out and get sympathy donations, said Sawtell. Wednesday night, the couple remained in jail. A judge set bail for Holzendorf for at a hundred and fifty thousand dollars she's due back in court on friday and i would be on this case like white on rice so i will be giving you guys update lewis was still waiting to make an initial appearance in court as of thursday morning i just don't understand it why do you have to do this children i don't understand this i just really don't it really brings tears to my eyes because it's no excuse for this it's no excuse for this. And it's always these women. That's, it's the women that be with these men who are not the father to the child, but allowing the abuse. Okay? And they joining in on the abuse. Because some of these women feel like they're going to take whatever anger they have against the child's father and, and, and bring it upon the child. The child is innocent. Okay? And you got some people out there that do that. Okay, some parents, men and women, that will hate their parent and take out all their anger on the child. So I don't know what her deal is, why both of them did this, but I'm going to be following this case and I will let you know what the updates I get. Okay, so I, you know, I just may he rest in peace. He was a beautiful little boy, you know, beautiful little boy. How could you sleep at night? How could you sleep at night? I don't understand how people could sleep at night when they hurt these children. I, I just don't understand it. I, I, I don't understand it. <sighs> Maybe I'm not a monster of an, enough to understand it, okay? Maybe I'm too human to understand why they would do this to kids. And CPS have to do a better job because... They, every time a child slips through the cracks because they appear to be okay, they have food in the house and the refrigerator is full, but still something is going on. You have to do a thorough check. You have to know the signs. Some social workers just want to get in there and get out, especially on a Friday. You got very few social workers that care, but you have a whole bunch who don't care. And just want to do their job and pin down on a piece of paper. This didn't happen. You know, yada, yada, yada. But when the mess hit the fan, then they want to go back and try to cover their tracks. Well, this happened and that happened. Come on. Look what happened to Gabriel Fernandez. Look what happened to Miss Mary Brown in Brooklyn. These children... And a whole lot of kids out there who are not with us today because at the hands of their parents and their parents' lover. If I'm with somebody and they can't love my child how they love me, then we can't be together. There's no way I'm going to be with somebody who don't love me, who loves me, but hate my children. Oh, no, I, we can't rock together. No, no. Go about your business, find you some other little tramp or whoever will do that, but not me. If you can't love, you love me, you got to love my children. And that's the way it is. But there's not a lot of enough people out there, especially these women. There's not enough women out there who have that mindset, you know. You got women out there who will get rid of, a, get rid of their children for a man, okay? And that's despicable. That is disgusting in my case. Okay, that's disgusting. I, can't, I don't like stuff like that. I really don't. If you don't want to have children, if you don't want the responsibility of raising a child, then don't lay down and make one. Or if you want to, if you get pregnant and you don't want the child, give that child to somebody that's going to love the child and take care of the child. And make sure that child grow up to be somebody. Well... This is it. This is how I'm ending my video for today. You guys, I'll come back tomorrow with something for you to, you know, to talk about. But please let me know in the comment section, um, how do you feel about these stories that come out with these children? Um, do you think CPS is doing enough? 
okay? And also, how do you feel about that teenage girl and that guy under her bed for three weeks? Like, how did he shower? What did he eat? Like, it's just so many questions I have. But we'll say those for another day. But I guarantee you, I'm gonna, I promise you, I'm going to stick to these stories. And I'll make sure I give you an update as soon as I get an update. All right. So you guys have a great evening and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.